Hello. So there's this um, video about um, some random shit, apparently. Um, it's not directly, well it is connected to the planner thing, but um, I thought I'd do some computer thingies because uh, I use the computer quite a lot. Um, this is an Im image, or this is the screen of, it's quite dark by the way. Can we kind of lift it up a little bit? Um, yeah, so this is SketchUp. It's uh, like the non-professional uh, way of doing stuff. But, uh, well, I'm no professional and it's quite easy to work with. Although, uh, it's not very... Um, the precision is quite shitty, to be honest. So, if you uh, draw a circle, it looks like... Uh, well, straight lines, and you can say how much lines it, it, it should have, or segments it should have to be sort of a circle, but it never is a circle. So that's uh, one thing, but also um, it's like point, point something millimeter precision, but then again, it's still kind of random, it looks like. So uh, usually what I do is, um, uh, multiply it by 10. So if you make uh, something of 10 uh, millimeters, then you make it 100 millimeters. And then you just do it all the time and then later on you will uh, scale it down to, to have the proper size because otherwise the SketchUp doesn't, well, it just doesn't do it so it fucks it up. Um, this is some uh, random uh, stuff, or it's not random but it looks random. But this is the um, the offset of the metal. The metal had uh, three, well, a pattern of three holes, and uh, uh, a T and R, it was, and T was five. So this is fifty millimeters. I'm not sure if you can see it. That's quite small, probably. But uh, in SketchUp right now, it's fifty millimeters because I scaled it upwards by 10. Um, so this is how much the holes are apart and uh, here I made the holes and I wanted to know if you probably could just use a calculator to do the same but for me it's easier to just draw it and, and, and see it uh, and, and, and then well then calculate it as well maybe but depending on uh, what the subject is sometimes I have no clue how to calculate it so I'll just uh, doing it by um, drawing it or whatever, <coughs> some uh, some method at least. Um, but uh, well, here are the holes, and they are uh, uh, three millimeters in diameter. This is also kind of weird because this this T and R. Uh, maybe I can get the side up as well. Let me see. It's called open area calculator yes that one r and t and uh, it's nice t okay it's five i'm not i have no clue where t stands for but r at least i would think it would be the radius but apparently as we can see here it's not the radius. Oh, well, you cannot see it because it's quite small. I'll just zoom in a little bit, I think. Uh, how the fuck can I zoom with this program? That's the big question. Oh, wait. Yeah, I got it. Oh, that's way too much. That's quite hard. Okay, do it like this. Yeah, this is readable, I think. So, yeah, it is. So, okay, uh, R, uh, well, R for me, oh, it's maybe a small R, I, I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've been in college. <laughs> but it's not the radius, it's the diameter of the hole, as you can see here, because it's drawn here. So it's uh, three millimeters. And then you would get 
32.6 that's the uh, open area I uh, put on the paper in the first video about the planner um, yeah but this side is really helpful because otherwise you can calculate it yourself but it's just uh, quite a lot of well it's not a lot of work but it's way much more work than just fill in these two numbers and you're pretty much done uh, back to the SketchUp um, yeah so this is this is the same conf configuration it's uh, R is 3 in this case it's 30 because I multiplied it by 10 because of the insane precision of SketchUp um, and what I did uh, I well I took a, like a two millimeter sp spacing between magnets to see what it does and then you will end up you can just calculate um, for instance you take we don't need this this stuff oh sorry we only need to yeah we only need to um, select this part as as an open area so these lines here is the is the spacing between the magnets so these pieces here don't count at all because there's magnet there so what we do we we select like uh, the open open area or we could do like a half of it. it doesn't really matter this piece and we can see here what the surface area is of course this is not the real surface area it's it's multiplied by 10 but uh, for the calculation it doesn't matter of course if you multiply everything by 10 so uh, what I did at first because I wanted to know for sure is uh, well get a calculator for a starter because uh, yeah <laughs> I'm not too too good in uh, calculating uh, stuff so we select everything this whole piece it's like half of a circle and also half of the Surface area, uh, surface area that is closed by the metal. We forget this part because this ratio will be the same as the whole part. So uh, it's 860. So we uh, kind of uh, do a uh, 100th percent divided by uh, 860 is uh, something something that's cool very nice and then we're gonna look up what the open area is it's only uh, 274 so we times 274 is 31.8 not exactly the same as the 32.6 they mentioned but it comes rather close and this could be well I'm not sure oh well yeah I'm pretty much no I don't know what it is it could be the round off error or it might be as well because of these sides are missing but that will be kind of weird but this is what it is this is the open area if you use a two millimeter cap with the uh, this configuration of a perforated metal sheet so if it's uh, R is 3 and T is 5 31.8 so okay and then here I drew the holes of the magnapan uh, magna um, speaker and they are um, if I recall yeah 15 or 1.5 millimeters wide and the gap is also, I think, 1.5 millimeters wide. Um, and they are 22 millimeters apart. So R is uh, 1.5 and T is 22 or 2.2, sorry, divided by 10, 2.2. So if we do the same with this one, uh, and in this case we're not gonna are we gonna take half of it okay well 
in this case we're going to do it different we're going to select the open area or now we're going to select all area first it's a 326 get the calculator back 100 divided by whoops and we get a number nice really cool and we're going to select the open area which is 175 times 175 is 53.6 percent open area that's uh, quite a lot and it's only open area at the place where you need it or at least where uh, air can escape from the membrane I mean if you put holes underneath the magnet the membrane won't benefit from it so um, I mentioned earlier like whew, half a year back or something I posted it somewhere on I think DIY audio I wondered why my low end of my panels had some sort of weird resonance or weird sounding low end like especially at the 50 Hertz 60 Hertz the lower you go the weirder it sounds if you had like high SPL and I think this might be it I think I think it's 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 pushing the air through uh, two tiny holes and you get like the scuffing kind of weird sound you get when you have a port that's way too small in diameter just like a poo and pa but it really sounds really weird so I think that might be it but for these panels that I'm making it's no big of a deal because they won't reach uh, beyond 100 Hertz I mean lower than so it's no big deal but it's something uh, I will take into account next time and the things I will take account in account are the following first of all more open area in general but also maybe um, since I can cut the magnets and the magnets as they are are a little bit too big anyways I might select a piece of metal with the right amount of T so the distance between the holes and uh, accordingly uh, cut the magnet so it li will line up so we don't have uh, places where there is magnet and no holes at all because uh, this will be the ideal situation for the metal I have now but I will show you uh, tomorrow or whatever um, when I line up the magnets or put in the magnets you will see that some some of these places where the the wire is there are no holes at all just plain metal which will bring down the open area even further so that sucks uh, well that's about the open area crap another thing is some people wondered about the magnet jigs um, I usually tend to sketch up in SketchUp and only use Kanban for um, making the program for my CNC um, and I will open one it's the planner I think it's this one this is the one we're working on at the moment and um, yeah it's just making pockets pockets of the width of the magnet or slightly wider now when we zoom in you can see it has these these notches and this will clamp in the magnet because I cut the magnet my own it's I cannot get this insane accuracy that it will always fit in this in this uh, pocket so with these notches I, I'm able to make this a little bit wider so there's more space so I can have a little bit of deviation hard okay so <laughs> the magnet can be a little bit bigger than I planned <coughs> um, 
and these notches will um, still uh, will grab the magnet. If I put the magnet in in the jig, you will see that it has has um, it, it will cut a little bit into the magnet. But this is like really small. This is how much is it? Ooh, I cannot even measure. Uh, oh, no. No, I, it's really small. It's like uh, 0.3 millimeters or something, or four maybe. So, but in this this way, I can. Uh, I well, I got some leverage to um, make the magnets uh, a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, depending on uh, what day it is. I think. Uh, well, and the same goes for the bigger magnets. As you can see, same notches. So that's about the jig. And then, uh, also a nice calculator, because you can, uh, it's for the wire, but you can, you can select aluminum wire, which is really nice, because most calculators only, um, well, they're for copper, copper wire. And in this case, it's for aluminum, so it's perfect for our um, thing. So what I do, um, well, in between all these magnets, uh, there will be wire. And we know the length of the magnet, so we multiply these gaps by the length of the magnet plus uh, one centimeter or something. And then we get uh, the length of the wire, but there's uh, a but. We will give the sides uh, another extra round of wire, like a uh, winding, another winding, because these sides are uh, quite hard to move. In the middle, it will move easy or more easy than on the side. So we're gonna give here, we're gonna give them four more turns and here the same. So in the end, there are 12 gaps if I'm correct, yes, 12 gaps, or 12 magnets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, 12. Then it's, yeah, 12 gaps, because one of the wires is running between the tweeter wire and the mid-range wire. So it's 12, and then we use uh, another four here and another four there, so we end up with 20. You do you do this uh, times uh, the the length, uh, which is in the end uh, this number. Is it? Yes, it's eleven meters of wire, and you fill in the thickness of the wire, and then the resistance comes out, which is very nicely on four ohms. So that's convenient. Uh, same goes for the tweeter panel. It had six turns, I think, and it's uh, point one seven, I think. Yes, that was uh, six turns. I said six times uh, fifty-eight or something around that number. Ah, and again, four point zero seven ohms. So they're both four ohms, which is nice. So. Um, impedance will uh, stay the same and it's also easy with uh, crossover design and stuff uh, well that's about it in terms of um, computer shit I think oh nice my video has uploaded so I'm gonna post it see you around